YouTube, Jake Troy back in the shop, uh, getting to work on the machinist jack castings done for me by Clark Easterling, Windy Hill Foundry, link in the description. Um, so anyway, I got four of these and I need to, at the minimum, machine the bottom and machine the top. The goal here is a finished height of 2.75 inches, which is the height of at the bed of a six inch curt vise, right? And this finishes out to about three inches here. So we have plenty to work with here. 3.025, right? So got to trim the bottom, flatten the bottom up. And then I'd like to take as little off the bottom as possible and then take the rest off the top. But how do you hold this, right? Uh, there aren't any real parallel surfaces or flat surfaces. I mean, there's the top, there's the bottom. But I can't really clamp it this way and machine this surface or this surface. So how are we going to hold it? What we're going to do is, I got four of them to do here. We're going to make soft jaw to hold it. I got some blanks for my six inch curt here that are, uh, I believe these are from uh, USA Jaws. Uh, on uh, YouTube, I mean on uh, eBay, and uh, I, no reason to make them yourself because you can't do it for as cheap as you can buy them. Anyway, um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna set these up in the big cranny trucker. We're gonna cut a slot in here. We're gonna start machining these for the for holding this right here, and uh, this is our goal. Something to look kind of like that, right? Right, good secure grip here and uh, hold like this. Now, I could use a V block, I could use um, a variety of uh, devices to hold it. Uh, I could clamp it to a block, uh, like so, machine this part, move it over. I could, I mean, there's things you could do, but I've got four to do and I anticipate doing some more. So, I want to get set up to do this in a uh, small production kind of manner and we're going to make some soft jaws out of these so uh, step one get these babies over the kearney trekker
So here we are, back at the bench. Clean off this. Maybe a D40. I'll clean up all that. All those chips later. I'm not going to put you through that. jaws by the way that was um, a Niagara cutter three foot three flute cobalt uh, rougher finisher two inches uh, diameter we took two half inch passes and uh, came out with this really nice um, really nice finish I I uh, hate to admit, I don't think Niagara makes those anymore. So, um, the, uh, the large, uh, cobalt roughers are getting to be a dying breed. So, all right, here's the plan. Got my vice jaws machined out here. I 3D printed two halves of the... A uh, portion of the model for the jack, the shank there. What I did was, here's the plan. What the plan is, is we're going to take this. We're going to clamp it in here. like so put C clamps on it here then we're going to melt and pour the cavity with some low melting point alloy this is Cero safe um, melts around somewhere between 158 and 190 degrees Fahrenheit this is the good stuff without the cadmium in it so it won't kill you melts a little higher but it's safer anyway we're gonna melt that and pour in here and then after it cools which should be pretty quickly we'll separate and we should have a nice negative image made by these two portions of the 3d print spaced out this far apart which is an eighth of an inch total and in that we put these in the vise and that should give us a great mount to hold this bottom up. So anyway, um, let me make sure that this is the right side. Never done this before, so don't know if it's gonna work, but we're gonna give it a shot. So first things first, um, I've got some, dry film release agent here we're going to spray on everything because we don't want it to stick too bad i mean i realize it's going to stick some but we're going to spray some on the table. We're just going to use the bottom. The table is the bottom here. Let's get some clamps.
Ah, not enough. Give this a chance to fully cool, which I'm sure will be pretty quick because this aluminum is going to suck the heat out of it. But I'll be back with you here in a sec. So, stuff appears to be rock cold. around this side I need to probably get out of there that's stuck pretty good oh. well get to see some of the innards there huh so If I had printed this with hips, I could have dunked it in some lemon-based, citric acid-based solvent. It would have dissolved this stuff right out. Um, oh. Well, never mind. It wasn't that bad after all. to do is crack all this stuff out of the inside pretty darn good. I think that's going to work. Let's get that baby mounted up in the vise. That looks pretty good.
that's seated in the bottom. That's not going anywhere. So it feels smooth as glass there. Um, I didn't quite cut in far enough to clean up my slot. A little frustrated about that, but other than that, it's fine. Um, you can see these shiny spots right here, right? Right, that's where it was a little hard, right here on the ends. And like I said, uh, Clark and I had a conversation about that. He was concerned about that. And uh, so I'm gonna talk to him about it and see about if I just need to fill this in in the pattern and, and uh, try another batch and see if that takes care of that chill. N nothing else. I mean, it, this is all just smooth as all get out. So anyway, uh, looks great. Um, sits down nice and flat. So there we go. Um, the uh, machining of the Machinist Jack Patterns castings will commence. Um, my plan after the bottom is done here, right, on all of these, is just to uh, bolt them straight down to the table to machine the top and have a good reference on both sides. Or maybe do like a mini pallet and uh, bolt them to that. But I thought bolting the machine tail would be the best, bat, best bet. So. We're gonna give that a shot. Um, I hope everyone's being safe. And uh, you know, let's discuss the you know the technique here. Um, the Sharon Safe melted with no problem. I mean, there's my ladle, and you saw it. All I did was uh, point the bottom. I put a point a propane torch at the bottom on low, and. Uh, melted this stuff right down the latent heat in the ladle kept it melted for quite some time so anyway not going to be scooping gumbo with this thing right so uh, by the way this is a master car part uh, you can get anything from those guys so there we go uh, so was this um, 
dry film release agent. It's a spray-on product, MR311, dry film release agent. Also have this from Master Car. It worked great. I sprayed the bench with it, and uh, it does leave kind of a, just a dry film. I'm be interested to see clean. after I'm done, or at some point in the future, um, how long those, those jaws are going to last, if I'm going to have to refurb those at some point in time, uh, because they'll obviously deform through use. So uh, when I built up those 3D patterns, I put a sixteenth of an inch of a flange, that was that flat piece that bolted between the jaws on each side, so we had an eighth of an inch of crush, basically. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how long these last. Stay safe in the shop and without. Uh, keep your social distancing on. Be careful. Uh, you're all my friends. I don't want to lose any of you. Be safe in the shop. I'll be back with you real soon.